What's up, YouTube? It's me, Inkful, coming at you with uh, the second part to the series on how to easy mo. Now, uh, at the time of this recording, I already have the Yamato. However, I am going to do the easy mo video, obviously, first. Um, I've spent about $200 in um, containers, to say the least. And uh, let's just say I got a lot of stuff that I was able to grind through this line really, really quickly. And I'll probably be able to grind through the next line very quickly, too. So, uh, it's very nice. It's very nice. Okay, so the Izumo is, I would say, a step up in accuracy from the Amagi. Um, you have three turrets, or not, yeah, well, you have three turrets and three barrels per turret. So that is a total of nine barrels. Um, now, I think it's more accurate, overall speaking. Um, I think you will enjoy this ship. A lot of people don't, but I think it's because they're just not playing it properly. You have a massive deck, as you can see. So you want to play more passively and uh, you know, stay away from them pesky little cruisers or blow them the fuck out of the water, <laughs> if you get what I'm saying. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll go over the equipment and the module upgrades that I forgot to do in the last video, but you know, hey. So competitive wise, um, module upgrades, I would take them com for competitive wise. Um, this would, uh, the whole upgrade gives you more AA turrets. Doesn't give you that much more HP, but you know, it's better than nothing. It gives you some more main battery range. And then obviously you want some more speed. Um, as far as this is, I wouldn't recommend taking any of these like equipping them like uh, don't research either one of these you know, obviously you have to research this before getting uh the yamato but uh i would not recommend taking these you can get you can get by just fine without them if you're just grinding to the yamato specifically um as far as upgrades work um this is all from like a competitive standpoint and i will let you know if you need to take any of these just to make your grind a little bit more bearable um, as far as the first upgrade goes, main armament mod one, obviously it's probably the best choice here. Um, as far as anything else, I don't really see it. Maybe, uh, you could probably take damage control party mod one for a little bit more competitiveness. Um, other than that, that's probably the only thing else I would take. As far as mod two, I would take damage, damage control system mod one. Um, you don't really need engine room protection. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you, you just want to re reduce the the potential of catching fire or getting uh, flooded by torpedoes uh it is a pain in the ass in the japanese line you will catch on fire a lot and well flooding's not as bad but the fires are uh as far as third uh upgrade goes aiming system mod i do recommend this if you're gonna grind if you're just trying to grind through it uh even if i mean obviously competitive wise as well you want to take aiming system mod it just helps with the dispersion minus seven percent um shell dispersion so that's really nice at long range and uh yeah i mean you could take uh i could see a, a situation where somebody might take main battery mod too but it's the, the accuracy is just not as good without this so <clears throat> personally i would recommend aiming system mod one so for the fourth you can continue to take damage control system just like the other video competitive wise um propulsion as well i mean honestly this is kind of personal preference in my opinion um i would say if you are getting caught out in a situation where your fires at least floodings i mean it's kind of hard to avoid sometimes but uh you shouldn't put yourself in a situation till late game to where this would even be useful so probably steering gear or propulsion would be better propulsion in the situation that you're trying to you know do some throttle play and throw off bbs and make a miss and you know speed up quicker and slow down a little bit faster as far as steering gears mod this is strictly just so you can hopefully potentially dodge one or two more torpedoes or not take a you know a full fucking you know or full salvo of torpedoes it uh it's nice to have i always recommend steering gear mod one on pretty much every single battleship personally except for uh <clears throat> I think I'd take damage control system. Like on the Croy first, I'd take this because you're a hard target. I'm just going for pure takiness on the Croy first. And uh, this this uh, this definitely helps in the Croy first at least. Um, as far as this goes, con concealment system. That's it. Um, I wouldn't recommend either one of these. Torpedo lookout system is nice, but the fact that you can add a you know 5% to dispersion of enemy shells is very nice. It's very nice. 
And as far as the last upgrade goes, I recommend, for grinding purposes, that is, I recommend uh, main battery firing range if you don't want to spend... I can't remember the difference or how much more or less it is. I don't... 21 kilometers. I did end up buying this, but I think it's about the same range if you just buy this, and this is cheaper. So just double check when you look into that. Um, I ended up buying this just for the grind to make, you know, tier 9 to get in tier 10 matches. You want to have the range, obviously. Um, and I wouldn't take either one of these others, too. Um, your traverse speed's already very, very slow, and you'd just be hindering your gameplay, in my opinion. As far as... Uh, consumables go you can pick between the spotting aircraft and the fighter aircraft um the one thing i've noticed is you have a ridiculous amount of range in the japanese battleship line at least uh once you get to like tier 9 and the tier 10 um it is nice having a spotting aircraft and sure you're gonna hit those salvos here and there but uh like clan battles obviously spotting aircraft um and tier 9 because you well if there's no carriers if you're playing a game mode where carriers are banned like this season at the time of this recording i think it's what season 14 or 15 um there are no cvs so taking fighter and clan battles at tier 9 would be useless it, well i mean obviously even <laughs> there's no tier 9 carrier so so if there's like tier 9 clan battles you always want to take the spotting aircraft competitive wise um same with like uh Rank battles unless they allow tier 8s and tier 9s like they've done in the past. Uh, random battles, I could see you taking fighter if you're just, you don't want to deal with it, you know? I don't blame you personally. Um, okay, so now we're going to talk about the uh, commander build. I did make some changes and I do apologize if any of you guys may have taken my advice from the previous video. Um... I ended up going with pre preventative maintenance because after I recorded that first video, uh, I started noticing that my main turns were getting knocked out more and my steering gear was getting knocked out more. Or, I'm sorry, my engine. I wouldn't take engine room protection, though. I would just recommend getting this talent. So I would recommend preventative maintenance. Obviously, emergency re repair specialist. Greasy gears is a must-have I took Vigilance as well because DDs like to sneak past if they can and go after, like, uh, essential, like, you know, ships on a team like Carriers, Yamato, you know, Sniper-type BBs sometimes in random battles mostly. Um, I took uh, Basic Survivability. That's pretty self-explanatory. I recommend, pretty much recommend this on every single battleship that you play. Uh, Emergency Repair Expert. I did have Concealment, but I went ahead and got rid of it. And just took fire prevention expert, or I had that, but I switched concealment to uh, to uh, this one right here. Um, the way I see it is, regardless of how much uh, concealment that I stack, when I shoot my guns, I'm gonna get detected, unless I'm behind an island, and then the concealment expert doesn't really matter, you know. Um, you can't really get your your uh, concealment down by that much. I mean, it, it's nice, but I mean, you're sitting back and you want to kind of keep about 15 kilometers, or I'm sorry, you want to keep about 15 kilometers between you and the close ship, I would say, unless it's late game, obviously. And then at that point, it doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> I can see a world where people take a concealment build. It's, it's completely okay if you do that. I just personally am just, I'm all about survivability builds and battleships because of the current meta of the game. You, uh, you're just hard targeted. There's so much DPM with HE. There's so many fires. There's so many different ways to get torped. Now with, you got submarines, you got aircraft carriers with, uh, torpedoes. You got DDs with torpedoes, cruisers with torpedoes. You got ships like the Smolensk, the Yoshino, uh, the Hindenburg, you know, this, you want survivability in my opinion. Concealment is useless. I mean, it's not useless necessarily speaking but like on a battleship that is massive and easy to detect even with the concealment upgrades it's it's useless in my opinion if you disagree that's fine you just go your concealment build that's okay and you know it may work out for you and it may not who knows we'll see 
Um, and for the last talent that I'm taking, I'm taking Adrenaline Rush. So the lower health I get, the quicker I reload, the quicker um, I uh, do more AA damage. And if I'm close range late game, the more my secondary batteries go off. Adrenaline Rush is good on every single BB, just about, except for maybe like the Vermont. But I haven't gone down the Vermont line personally. So I'm not 100% sure. All right, guys. Um, if you want... Uh, to know why I did not go with anything else, uh, go check my previous video, which was the Tier 8 Amagi video. I will tag it right above right now. Um, and yeah, also I could see a world where you can go an anti-air build. There, I'm pretty sure there used to be a Yamato build like this, but since the commander reworks, I don't think it's a thing anymore. I'm not 100% sure you may have to check that out. For yourself there's a <clears throat> link that i will leave in the description below that will take you directly to a website with uh some of the ships don't have builds but a lot of them do and the yamato is one of them you can look through those and see if there's anything else you may like in there as well all right guys we're gonna head to part two which will be the all right guys welcome footage. to part two of the video thank you for sticking around if you've stuck around this far um while we have a second please be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the content guys trying to uh you know, get to 100 subscribers so I can get my own custom URL and feel cool, you know. Um, so, yeah. Here we go. Tier 9 Izumo gameplay, my guys. Uh, I am playing with a clanmate here. As you can see, he is playing the key, which he got for Christmas, I think. He got some little cashola and went ahead and bought the key. Um, he says he likes it. I haven't played it personally, so if any of you guys are interested in that ship, um, it has torpedoes, I know that. I can't remember the range on them, but, uh, yeah, if you're looking for a ship, uh, my boy here, he says he loves the keys, so maybe he can take his word for it and go ahead and buy it. So, obviously, just like the previous video and just like the next video, you want to sit back. As you can see, I'm literally going, like, one-fourth speed right now. Um, I am just waiting to see what we spot and then uh, adjusting my positioning based off of that. I think we have an AFK cruiser or, or a Moswa right next to me. That's always nice to see in your games. I'm sure you guys just absolutely love to see that. So I'm assuming to see somebody obviously within this vicinity. But uh, I don't know what our DDs. I don't know if our DD is going full steam. Doesn't really look like it, but you know. So I went ahead and speed up sped up a little bit um just uh basically what you're seeing now this is how you want to play you know i'm see i'm like 18 kilometers out 19 kilometers out from the st louis i'm playing back i'm letting everybody else do uh do their thing and uh as you can see here you'll see why you want to take the aiming uh the aiming control mod or whatever it's called here in a second look at that dispersion it's relative it's pretty clean see vertical dispersion so, uh, you get a Citadel. Bam. That's why I recommend the, uh, upgrade. Is it the aiming system mod? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Highly recommend that. As you'll see here in a second, he will not be with us for much longer. Um, I won't spoil it too much except for that fact right there. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice. So, as you can see, I'm kind of broadside to this, uh, Bismarck in North Carolina here. But, um... I'm not too worried about the Bismarck, at least, because the dispersion at that tier is pretty bad. Um, the Bismarck is a fun ship to play, though, just FYI. I, it was my favorite German ship, besides Kirk first. Get a pin and a oh, pesky freaking overpin there. Um, just, you know, I'm doing some throttle play, backing up. I think I go back forward. I'm just trying to play. Yeah, I'm playing with them. And uh, the St. Louis is kind enough to go broadside again for us. So I aim out about seven clicks, because he's... a He's a speed boy, eight clicks, and he, he's a speedy boy, so I'm like, okay, this guy's going to put on... I think he has an engine boost, if I recall correctly. And uh, as you can see here, this is the result of being a goofy player. You die. So we got two Citadels, and we destroyed them. We got a Dev Strike and First Blood. So this was an excellent 10 out of 10 start to my game. I'm like, oh, this is going to be so much easier to... Um, to play now it's just gonna be nice as you can see depth charges a little tip for you real quick with the depth charges if you press your shift key and then you press your depth charge you can have a upward looking down angle 
looking at, as you could see previously, looking at the uh, uh, Salmon. We get a couple of uh, target hits there, not too bad. Four target hits. So we chunked uh, that old uh, pesky... Uh, I'm surprised he didn't go after me. He had to know I was there, right? I can't remember if I was detected or not. Um, I'm surprised he didn't launch any torps at me. Or those, those might be his torps right there, actually. I can't remember. What is the... I don't know what the torp range is on the Tosh can. Or the trash can is... Uh, what my friends say so as you can see here i'm sitting about 20 clicks out or 20 knots or 20 kilometers sorry i can't i don't know what's wrong with me and it's really hard nobody's really focusing me so obviously this is good for me and as you'll see later in this game i get to like you know medium to close range and you'll see that you know your hp starts to shed away very very quickly um obviously it will become obli not oblivious but or oblivious is oblivious the word i want to use it will become obvious that Playing anything closer to than medium range is going to become very problematic for you, at least in the Izumo, and I can confirm as well as the Yamato, unless it's very late game. And uh, which that situation, I think it we could consider it late game. So here, I just take a pot shot at the North Carolina because I'm not, I haven't really done anything. Nobody's providing me any sort of opportunity to uh, get a nice little Citadel off of them. So I just shoot a pot shot there. You got a couple. I think I got a couple pins. And then the uh, d the uh, the submarine pops back up, unironically. See, so I, I press shift, or I press forward and then shift, and it gives you that eye... What, I don't know what word I'm looking for. That bird's eye view, I guess, would be the right word. It's like up, you know, you're up and above looking down. Uh, that is definitely nice. And we get two depth charge hits. I'm pretty sure we end up killing him here. Yep, so we get a total of eight depth charge hits on that little submarine. We get a pin and a three ricochets. Wow, and an overpin. You gotta love overpins. I'm telling you, it's the most annoying shit in the world. In the, you, you'll see it a lot when you're playing uh, Japanese battleships. So, uh, again, just take a pod shots. There's nothing really crazy for me to do. The uh, North Carolina is starting to go forward, so I lead them a little bit because it's going to take them a second to get up to really good speed. And I think we get a few p good pins here. Nope, just one pin and a torpedo protection. So I ping the North Carolina because he is the most dangerous target at the moment, being the closest. I'm trying to get my teammates to uh, shoot at him, obviously. Um, as far as just a random battles tip... Um, I do recommend uh, pinging targets and stuff and, you know, don't like spam ping them or anything because that can be annoying. Uh, I would recommend, however, just pinging them here and there, trying to get your teammates to uh, shoot them. So I hold my salvo here because I'm thinking, okay, this North Carolina is probably going to turn out or something or just, or I can speed up to where I will have a flusher broadside on him. And uh, so I decided to hold my shot here. And now you can see we're starting to get in the mid. And there he goes. He's about to go broadside here in a second, if I recall. Yep. Here it comes. I start to notice it. Line up my shot and shoot. And I'm pretty sure I smacked the shit out of this guy, if I recall correctly. I indeed do smack thy shit out of this guy and get four penetrations in a Citadel hit. It is real nice. So I heal up. As you can see, we're starting to get to mid-range play. Start paying attention to my health pool. And uh, it'll start to go down, relatively speaking. It's noticeable difference in gameplay. Uh, at longer range, for some reason, people don't tend to target you. And I shot, just for clarification, I shot that salvo just in case uh, Torpedo didn't uh, hit that uh, BB. Because from the angle he was, it, it looked like he should be able to dodge those. So I take a look around, like always. I always want to check my surroundings to make sure nobody snuck around me. You can also just look at the map as well. Always keep an eye on your map. I, I, I do recommend keeping your map relatively huge like mine. Mine's maxed out. Um, I tend to do that when I play Battleships a lot. Because uh, there's a little circle. If you see that, if you look at my mini map, right over by where the Ohio is, there's a circle. And you can use that to aim over mountains and shit. So that's why I have my map that big when I'm in Battleships. I get, oh, three pins, not bad, not bad. We get another overpin, so I'm, I'm, I am trying to get my team to shoot the Ohio. 
Not sure what the fuck our new Shishima is doing. He's got Ohio right next to him. I don't. I can't remember if he dies here. Um. Then I switched my focus. Uh. I think yeah. Back to the Ohio. I was like, you know what? I think I can pin this or sit it on this guy. I don't think I do though. Or maybe we do. Let's see. Do we sit it on him right here? Nope. We get two more pins though, and we knock out his turret. That's always nice. Okay. So the new Shishima is finally doing. What I'm asking him to do. So you see, my heart, my health is starting to, you know, take some chunks to it because I got a, I think it's a Mosma shooting me. So I start to speed up. I'm gonna try to put the island. I think it, yeah. I'm trying to put myself in a position where I'm not getting shot from elsewhere, and I just switch my focus back to the Bismarck here. And I uh, see those chunks, man. We we're at full health like two minutes ago, and look at that. We're already almost half health. Already almost half health. So here, I think I... Do I kill the Ohio? I do not remember. We got a Citadel hit, so that's always nice. We don't kill him, but we get a Citadel. I think the most satisfying thing is... Has to be Death Strikes for me. It has to be. Because that's the most satisfying thing in a battleship. Is just absolutely wrecking somebody's shit. Just feels amazing. I had a really good Yamato game that I was going to use for my next video where I did over 200k fucking damage, but I got a new SSD for Christmas and I installed it the other day after I played that game. And uh, I accidentally deleted it. So I'm a little uh, a little upset about that. I'm hoping to get another game here, relatively good game here shortly, so we can uh, have... Oh, four pins. Not bad, not bad. And another overpin. Tell you one thing, the German BBs are very hard to Citadel if you're not aware of that. Most people are, so really don't have to. Uh, most people already already are aware that uh, it's really hard to. I've found the most success in my Montana Citadeling uh, German BBs from like. 18 kilometers plus away just shoot out a pop shot and I get a random ass citadel or double citadel and a curry first I'm just like oh shit I guess it's just because the angle downwards um at least those shots so as you can see we're at half health here this fucking annoying ass Moskva was irritating the shit out of me uh keep shooting my ass and I'll tell you one thing the Moskva's reload time is so nice when he can just pin me like that so we start to back up we're trying to, you know, angle a little bit better so the boss can't pin us that easily. Um, and uh, just a quick uh, tip real quick. With the Russian um, cruisers, a lot of people don't shoot them. But if you're far enough away and your shells kind of, they can arc downwards. They will arc downwards. You can pin them from the top of their, like, the deck. As you can see here, I'm going to get a few pins, if I recall correctly. Um, and I do end up killing this guy, I think. So you want to aim, just aim to hit the deck with your battleship, and uh, you will pin them with AP. Is if you're too close, yeah. I mean, see, we pinned them there. We did get there's this dispersion kind of fucked us. Um, we did get three ricochets. Um, <clears throat> but I uh, ping the mosque, as you can see. I'm trying, you know, I do recommend pinging like I said earlier. Um, and again, don't ping too much because then everybody's like, oh, shut the fuck up. You know, people are very salty in this game. Um, and you got a lot of people that think they know better than you and shit like that. And we're about to get slapped the shit out of by this, uh... Okay, so there we get two, uh, overpin and two ricochets. So that wasn't as good. It's fucking... Man, these... I'm telling you, these Russian carriers, dude, are... Not cash money. So we're gonna go down here, if I recall correctly, relatively shortly. And, um... Yeah, let's see. Yeah, yeah, we do end up down here. So I end up getting the kill, get a confederate achievement, so that's always nice. Also, guys, let me ask you a quick question. Um, tell me what you, leave in the comments, tell me what you think about uh, Wargaming taking out, getting flags and stuff for getting achievements. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments, because uh, it really pisses me off, personally. That you don't get rewarded anymore for doing good in the game and getting an achievement so uh let me know what you guys think i'm just curious all right guys well 
thank you for watching just to summarize everything that you may have skipped through or you even watched and it's, you know, it's a lot to process um sit back keep uh keep ships about 15 kilometers from you and uh do not play at medium range until you know at least some of the ships on your the most dangerous ships on your side have been uh eliminated and uh yeah i hope you guys had a great christmas and i hope you guys also have a safe and fun uh new year with that being said guys thank you for watching be sure to like the video comment and subscribe if you enjoy the content i will be releasing the yamato video um within the next few days of this dropping so stay tuned guys peace out